Imagine getting pulled over and the cop acts like you're hiding nuclear codes in your safe. One wrong move and boom, bright green paint explodes all over him, turning him into a walking traffic cone. But trust me, that's just the beginning. It was one of those crisp early mornings where the sun barely peeked over the horizon, painting the road in soft hues of orange and gold. James Howard, a 52-year-old retired U.S. Army general, was cruising down the highway in his sturdy SUV. On the back seat, strapped securely with a thick belt, sat a heavy steel safe. Inside, his life, personal documents, military awards, and family heirlooms. To anyone else, it was just a hunk of metal. But to James, it held everything he valued. The safe wasn't just locked tight, it was fortified. If anyone dared tamper with it, the internal defense system would release a spray of indelible paint, marking the intruder for all to see. It was a precaution, not something James thought would actually come into play. As the tires hummed along the smooth asphalt, James found himself enjoying the quiet. The open road had a way of clearing his mind, letting the chaos of the world fall away. But his peace didn't last long. From the corner of his rearview mirror, he noticed the telltale glare of red and blue lights. The sound of a siren followed, breaking the calm. Seriously? He muttered under his breath, gripping the steering wheel tighter. He glanced at the speedometer. He wasn't speeding. No traffic violations, no broken lights. Yet, here he was, being flagged down by a patrol car. James sighed and pulled over to the shoulder, the crunch of gravel under his tires filling the air. The patrol car stopped a few feet behind him and outstepped Sergeant Carl Henderson. Stocky, late forties, with a scowl etched into his face like it was carved there permanently. James recognized the type immediately. This wasn't going to be a friendly roadside chat. Morning, sir, Henderson called out, striding toward James's window. His eyes zeroed in on the back seat almost instantly, lingering on the bulky safe. That's an interesting piece of cargo you've got there. Mind telling me what's inside? James rolled down his window just enough to talk, but stayed seated. He kept his voice calm and measured. Good morning, officer. It's just personal items. Nothing illegal, I assure you. Henderson raised an eyebrow, clearly unimpressed with the response. Personal items in a safe? On the back seat? That's a little unusual, don't you think? James felt his patience thinning, but kept his composure. Unusual doesn't make it illegal. Henderson smirked, leaning slightly toward the window. Well, how about you open it up for me, just to make sure there's nothing very uh, dangerous in there. James locked eyes with the sergeant, his expression firm. I'm sorry, officer, but I'm not opening anything. I'm not required to. There's no probable cause. That was the trigger. Henderson's smirk vanished, replaced by a tight-lipped frown. He straightened up, crossing his arms like he'd just been challenged to a duel. Now, listen here, he began, his tone shifting to something more aggressive. I've seen a lot of strange things out on this highway, but a safe riding shotgun? That's got suspicion written all over it. James exhaled slowly, his jaw tightening. I'm not breaking any laws, Sergeant. If you've got a reason to detain me, say so. Otherwise, I'd like to be on my way. Henderson didn't respond immediately. His eyes flicked back to the safe, then to James, sizing him up. For a moment, it seemed like he might let it go, but the look on his face said otherwise. He wasn't done yet. As Henderson stepped back toward his patrol car, James tightened his grip on the steering wheel. This wasn't going to end with a simple warning, and he knew it. The tension hung in the air, thick and heavy, like the calm before a storm. Henderson stood there for a moment, his hands on his hips, scanning the SUV like he was Sherlock Holmes, solving the mystery of the century. His eyes locked on the safe again, and you could practically see the gears turning in his head. Without so much as a buy your leave, he strutted around to the back passenger door, his boots crunching against the gravel like he owned the place. All right, let's see what's so important you can't even let me take a peek, Henderson declared, reaching for the door handle. James was out of the driver's seat in a flash, his calm demeanor now replaced with an unmistakable air of authority. He stepped between the sergeant and the door, his voice low and steady, but carrying the weight of someone who'd faced far greater challenges than a nosy cop. Don't touch it, that's my property. You have no right, James said firmly, his posture as unyielding as a steel wall. For a second, it looked like Henderson might back off, but then his expression shifted, a smirk curling at the corner of his mouth.
He wasn't just annoyed, he was challenged. And Henderson was not the kind of guy to let that slide. Oh, I think I do, he sneered, stepping back toward his patrol car. If you're going to make this difficult, I'll just handle it myself. James stayed rooted in place, watching as Henderson popped open the trunk of his cruiser and pulled out a crowbar. The sergeant twirled it in his hand like it was some kind of trophy, strutting back toward the SUV with all the confidence in the world. Look, you're refusing to cooperate, and I've got a job to do. So let's just say this is happening, whether you like it or not, Henderson announced, his tone dripping with smugness. James didn't flinch. Instead, he took a step back, his voice calm but loaded with a warning. You're making a mistake, Sergeant, he said, folding his arms. A big one. Henderson, of course, ignored him. He wedged the crowbar under the edge of the safe's door, grunting as he applied pressure. Hmm, big mistake, he grunted. The only mistake here is thinking you can roll down my highway with this and not get checked. And that's when it happened. A faint hiss filled the air, barely audible at first, followed by a sharp burst. Before Henderson could react, a jet of bright green paint shot out of the safe like a firework, hitting him square in the face. The impact was so sudden, he dropped the crowbar, stumbling backward as the paint spread across his uniform, face, and hands like an alien attack. What in the world? Henderson roared, flailing his arms as though he could shake off the paint. Spoiler, he couldn't. James stood off to the side, watching the scene with an almost imperceptible smile. The sight of the sergeant, now resembling a walking neon traffic cone, was almost too much. I warned you, James said, his tone as dry as the desert. That safe has a security system. You didn't want to listen. Henderson wiped at his face, but the paint only smeared, clinging stubbornly to his skin and uniform. You... what? Uh, this is assault, he sputtered, pointing a trembling, paint-covered finger at James. Assault? James raised an eyebrow, gesturing toward the safe. No, Sergeant, that's just a safety feature. Maybe next time you'll think twice before breaking into someone's property. Henderson stomped his feet, still flailing as if the paint would somehow magically disappear. You're going to regret this. I'll have you in cuffs before you can say James cut him off, holding up his phone. Just so you know, I've been recording this whole time, you know, for my safety. Henderson froze mid-rant, his paint-covered jaw hanging open. For the first time that morning, the smugness drained from his face, replaced by something resembling panic. James could almost hear the wheels spinning in his head as he realized just how bad this was going to look. Anything else, Sergeant? James asked coolly, slipping his phone back into his pocket. Or are we done here? Henderson was a sight to behold. The man was stumbling around his patrol car like he had just stepped out of a bad prank show. His face, uniform, and even his hands were drenched in neon green paint that shimmered obnoxiously under the bright sun. He grabbed a canister of water from his trunk, furiously splashing it on his face, only to discover the paint wasn't going anywhere. Why won't this come off? He barked, his voice a mix of rage and panic as he scrubbed harder. The paint only spread further, now dripping onto his boots. If anything, it made him look even more ridiculous. James leaned casually against his SUV, arms crossed, watching the chaos unfold like it was a Saturday morning cartoon. That's the thing about industrial-grade security systems, he said, his voice calm and just a tad amused. They're built to leave an impression. Henderson spun around, glaring at James with paint-smeared eyes. You think this is funny? You assaulted a police officer. That's a felony. He pointed a dripping green finger at James, the accusation sounding more desperate than authoritative. James didn't flinch. Instead, he calmly walked to the back of his SUV, opened the trunk, and pulled out a neatly organized folder. He flipped through the pages until he found exactly what he needed. Turning back to Henderson, he held up a laminated document. This isn't an assault, Sergeant, James said, his tone even. It's a security feature, fully legal and registered. Want to read the details, or should I call your supervisor so he can? For a moment, Henderson just stood there, blinking through the paint that was now starting to dry in odd patches on his face. The laminated document might as well have been a mic drop, but he wasn't ready to give up. You think this paperwork is going to save you? Henderson sneered, though his voice lacked its usual bravado. I know how to deal with people like you. James raised an eyebrow, but before he could respond, the sound of a car approaching broke the tension. 
A blue sedan slowed down, its driver clearly intrigued by the bizarre scene. The car pulled over a few feet away, and the driver, I, a man in his 30s with a smartphone already in hand, stepped out. Is everything okay here? The man asked, his phone clearly pointed at Henderson. Henderson froze for a split second, his paint-covered hands hovering awkwardly in midair. Sir, this is official police business, he said, his tone a poor attempt at regaining authority. The man didn't budge. Looks more like a paintball accident, he said, smirking, as he adjusted the angle of his camera. Mind if I record? You know, for transparency. James couldn't suppress the faint smile that tugged at the corners of his mouth. Feel free, he said, stepping slightly to the side to give the camera a clear view of the sergeant. Henderson's expression twisted into something between anger and dread. He knew he was losing control of the situation, and the presence of a witness with a camera only made things worse. He muttered something under his breath and stormed back to his patrol car, leaving a trail of green paint wherever he stepped. You'll regret this, he spat over his shoulder, slamming the door shut. The engine roared to life, and the car sped off, leaving behind a cloud of dust and a very amused audience. James exhaled, turning to the man with the camera. Thanks for stopping by, he said, his voice casual. I think you just made my day a whole lot easier. No problem, the man replied, grinning. I'll make sure this gets seen by the right people. That guy won't be living this down anytime soon. Hash, 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 asterisk, asterisk, part four, the fallout, short version. James calmly drives away, knowing the green paint and video evidence will handle everything. Within hours, the video of Henderson covered in paint goes viral, sparking public outrage and endless memes. By the next day, Henderson becomes the laughingstock of his department, with colleagues mocking him and local media highlighting the incident. In a meeting with his captain, Henderson learns the man he harassed is James Howard, a highly respected retired U.S. Army general with decades of service and numerous honors. The captain suspends Henderson, launching an internal investigation and warns that his career may be over. Meanwhile, James enjoys a quiet morning, amused by the memes and headlines. He calls the police department to ensure appropriate action is taken, his tone calm but firm. Justice has been served, and James moves on with his life, knowing the lesson has been delivered.